Hi, this is Solomon. Today I'd like to help you understand how to desalinate seawater. We know that global warming is causing a lot of climate change. On one hand, a lot of places is becoming more stormy and wet, but even more places are becoming dry and hot. And so the whole world is running short of water. So I'm very keen to really change this without using excessive amount of energy. Now, this is the solar designator called the Solomon in awe that I'm going to place at the Science Park of Hong Kong. It will be able to design it, seawater through this tower, and also at the same time generate power because the concentrated sunlight will boil water in this water column and then generate electricity through the use of a gas turbine and the electric generator. Many countries in the world use reverse osmosis to obtain seawater from the ocean. Here's how it works. If you place a semi-permeable membrane in between fresh water and seawater, what you have is that the fresh water H2O molecules will pass through the membrane either way, but the solute, namely the salt molecules, will not be able to pass through the semi-permeable uh, semi membrane, and therefore, there's more water coming from this side onto the other side, and therefore you will see the water level on this side rises up. This is known as osmosis, for which a lot of plants will use uh, the cell membrane to obtain more fresh water and allowing the, uh, the water to rise up a tree trunk. Now, here's how it's implemented in many countries. You have these blue tubes where water, seawater, is pressure at about 20 plus times atmospheric pressure and that is pressed against a semi-permeable membrane, very often cellulose, similar to plant, into the center where the fresh water will be collected through this white pipe. The residue brine solution would be collected through the green pipes. And the Fresh seawater that's coming from the outside would have to go through a very meticulous filtering process in order to get rid of both uh, mostly organic matter that would very often foul the osmotic membrane. So it takes a lot of processing prior to compressing that. And the pressure requires so high, more than 20 and almost 30 times atmospheric pressure, that would take a lot of energy in order to push the fresh water onto the, uh, to pass the membrane. And that's very energy inefficient. For those countries that have a lot of crude oil, they can do thermal desalination by multi-stage flash distillation. We call each one of that a stage, and therefore you have five stages of distillation here. Now, Saudi Arabia burned crude oil directly in a boiler in order to generate steam to produce power. They also use the exhaust gas to heat up seawater. So you have a stream of seawater that is coming in here through the furnace for which the flue gas produced by burning crude oil would heat up this seawater and then put into the first stage boiler. Now, this seawater is pumping at a very high pressure. Uh, for example, it could be pumping at eight times atmospheric pressure, and the water would boil around the temperature of 160 degrees Celsius. So if you have heated the seawater to say 200 degrees Celsius, and you suddenly release the pressure to say eight bar pressure, then it would boils just very much like a pressure cooker. If you release the pressure of the pressure cooker, it will flash boil. So that's why it's called flash distillation. So this would take out a lot of the heat of the water, maybe dropping the temperature to about 180 degrees Celsius. And under that, 
it will flow to the next chamber with some of the fresh water, the boiled off steam, condensed by the incoming uh, colder water. So on one hand, this would produce condensation from the boiled off steam. On the other hand, it would also heat up the incoming seawater. Now, afterwards, these temperature reduced to 180 degrees seawater while some of that water is boiled off, goes into the second stage where the pressure is released again. For example, this time the pressure is reduced to uh, six times the atmospheric pressure. And again, there would be flash distillation, boiling off of the water, and therefore uh, it would heat up the incoming fresh water also. At the same time, the incoming fresh water, fresh seawater would condense the steam to continue the stream of uh, distilled water coming out this way. So this is repeated by multi-stage reduction of pressure so that it will flash boil, condense, and then it will be, has its temperature reduced and the salinity increased and will move on to the, the other stage, reduce the pressure again, and so on, until the fresh water would come out uh, as on the size C. So A is the hot flue gas, B, is the fresh seawater that doesn't have to be filtered and then it would then C produce a fresh water and D would be the brine solution that is successively concentrated as a flash boil in each of the stage. I think I found a better way to get fresh water. Not only that I don't need to use expensive electricity or crude oil, I can use just solar power to produce, besides power, also fresh water. Here's how it works. I use a solar power collector to collect sunlight so that it reflects onto a column of uh, seawater. It boils the seawater to produce steam. The steam drives a gas turbine and then it condenses to give us distilled water. I have discovered a way to track the sun as well as focus sunlight onto the water column in order to get power as well as distilled water. Here's how it works. I broke a conical surface into sectors, in this case 18 sectors, when this is inclined at a 45 degree angle. <clears throat> when it's particularly windy, the broken up surface would lie flat on the ground to avoid the wind force. When we have to use that to concentrate sunlight, we pull by this lever along the side of each of the sector of the, of the conical surface. We pull this up at the same time, all 18 of them, in order to track the sun. So at the beginning of the day, it will face the east, and this is vertical, in order to focus all the sunlight onto this water column. During the midday sun, the sun is directly overhead and therefore it reflects it directly onto the water column. And at night, it will fall further in order to avoid uh, wind forces. Here's how the water column in the center works. We call that the solar power of clean power and water. Uh, it consists of several concentric cylinders, the outermost being a glass cylinder that is about 40 centimeters in diameter, it will allow sunlight to be focused by the reflective mirror onto the water column. In order for the water to absorb the sunlight, we need to put some metallic strips in between uh, close to the surface in order to absorb the energy of the sunlight in order to heat up the water directly. Now, steam is generated at the top and goes down this metal tube into, to drive a turbine. And here is my steam turbine uh, that would be able to generate electricity. And then this particular chamber would allow steam to condense uh, and so you can get the fresh water at the very bottom. Here's a more detailed look at this tapering spark exponential 
Here's a more detailed look of the exponential spiral turbine that I've invented. You have the steam coming from the top into the center of the gas turbine. It comes down here and it would reduce its pressure as it pushes against the spiral vane of the gas turbine. The vane of the turbine has an exponential form uh, that has a radius that increases exponentially as the angle is turned. So as the angle is turned, the pressure is also reduced exponentially and giving the energy to the gas turbine, which in turn turns an electric generator. Now, there's more sunlight concentrated at the top of the water tower than at the bottom. So this is getting a lot more energy at the very top. So the fresh seawater is being heated up. And then at the very top, about two meter here, it would boil it off under pressure that is generated by the boiling steam. And it would then go through this pipe to the gas turbine. Now we want to superheat the steam that has been boiling at around 150 degrees Celsius at about four to six uh, times atmospheric pressure to superheat it to about 500 degrees Celsius because as the steam expands in the turbine and its pressure is reduced, uh, it would lose its energy if in case the steam is not superheated. Now, as the water rises and boils off, it returns through this very narrow gap to be boiled off even further. Uh, and then the brine solution we concentrated to be let out at the very bottom. Now, the superheated high pressure steam come down this center pipe and then yield its thermal energy as well as pressure energy through the gas turbine. And then the exhaust steam would press against the outer wall here. And because of the kinetic pressure of the steam, it would condense uh, in this condensation chamber. Now, the heat of condensation will be passed back onto the outside where you have incoming seawater. And so we are recycling the heat of condensation to improve the thermal efficiency of the gas turbine. Afterwards, you will have fresh water being condensed and we can collect the fresh water in the condensation chamber that is about two meters tall. I'm very excited about this invention because it will provide people of the world with fresh water and clean energy using just solar power, maybe supplemented with a little bit of thermal energy coming from the burning of propane. I think this will solve the energy crisis as well as the water crisis that we're facing nowadays. Until next time, this is Solomon.